Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're anything like me, you've spent countless hours looking up at the night sky, completely mesmerized by the sheer scale of it all. From the familiar constellations to the faint light of a distant planet, that vast, dark canvas has always sparked our imagination. It's a profound experience that reminds us of our place in the cosmos and fuels our innate desire to reach out and touch the stars. The idea of strapping yourself to a giant controlled explosion and blasting off into the great unknown, it's the stuff of dreams, to defy gravity, accelerating to over 17,000 miles per hour and breaking free from the atmosphere that has cradled humanity for its entire existence, that is the pinnacle of human ingenuity. It represents a mastery of physics and engineering on an awesome scale. We see these incredible machines, these titans of engineering, gracefully lifting off, and it feels like magic. The ground shakes, the roar is deafening, yet the ascent is a picture of perfect control. Each successful launch is a global event, a moment of shared awe. It's a testament to our relentless curiosity and our drive to explore what lies beyond our own little blue marble, a symbol of what we can achieve when we work at the edge of our capabilities. But here's the thing about pushing the boundaries of what's possible. It's incredibly hard. Rocket science isn't just a figure of speech. We're dealing with millions of parts working in harmony, enduring extreme temperatures, violent vibrations, and the vacuum of space. For every successful launch, there's a hidden story of trial, error, and sometimes catastrophic failure. The line between triumph and disaster is terrifyingly thin. The physics involved is so unforgiving that one tiny overlooked detail, a faulty sensor, a microscopic crack in a turbine blade, can cascade into disaster, bringing the whole magnificent structure tumbling down. It's a high-stakes game where the price of a mistake is astronomical, not just in terms of hardware but in lost time, data, and sometimes the tragic loss of human life. So today, we're going to pull back the curtain on the picture-perfect world of space travel. We're not doing this to sensationalize tragedy, but to understand the immense challenges and honor the lessons learned from the ashes. We're going to look at five rocket launches that went horribly wrong and explore how these failures ultimately paved the way for future successes. Because in the quest for the stars, even our biggest mistakes can become our greatest teachers. Our first story takes us back to January 28, 1986. It was a day filled with excitement and national pride. The Space Shuttle Challenger was set to launch, and this wasn't just any mission. On board was Krista McAuliffe, a high school teacher who was about to become the first civilian in space. The countdown was perfect, the liftoff was smooth, and for 73 seconds everything looked absolutely flawless. Then, the unthinkable happened. Against the backdrop of a clear blue Florida sky, the Challenger shuttle suddenly erupted into a massive, terrifying fireball. The investigation eventually pinpointed the cause to a deceptively simple component, an O-ring. These are basically giant rubber seals designed to contain the super-hot high-pressure gases generated during launch. The problem was the weather. The temperature was unusually cold and the engineers knew that rubber O-rings became less effective in cold temperatures. Fast forward nearly 30 years to June 28, 2015. The landscape of space travel had changed dramatically. A new private company, SpaceX, was revolutionizing the industry. On this day, a Falcon 9 was launching the CRS-7 mission, carrying over 4,000 pounds of supplies to the International Space Station. Everything seemed perfectly normal for the first two minutes of flight. Then, at 139 seconds into the flight, something went wrong. A cloud of white vapor suddenly appeared near the top of the rocket's second stage, it wasn't a huge, fiery explosion like Challenger but more of a rapid, catastrophic disintegration. After weeks of analysis, they found the culprit. It wasn't a complex engine failure or software glitch, it was a single, two-foot-long, one-inch thick steel strut. Once that single strut snapped, the high-pressure helium tank broke free, shot to the top of the tank at high speed, rupturing it and causing massive overpressurization. Let's turn the clock back to October 28, 2014. At the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia, Orbital Sciences was preparing to launch its Antares rocket for a cargo resupply mission. The launch was scheduled for just after sunset, promising a spectacular view. As the countdown reached zero, the rocket began its slow, powerful ascent. But then, 
just 15 seconds after liftoff, it all went catastrophically wrong. A bright, violent explosion erupted from the base of the rocket. The vehicle lost all thrust, seemed to hang in the air for a terrifying moment, and then fell back down directly onto the launch pad, creating a massive fireball. The investigation focused on the rocket's propulsion system. Unlike SpaceX, Orbital Sciences used refurbished engines from the Soviet era, AJ-26 engines based on 40-year-old technology. The investigation found that a bearing in the liquid oxygen turbopump failed, causing a chain reaction that led to the catastrophic explosion. For our next story, we rewind to 1957. The Cold War was at its iciest, and the Soviets had just launched Sputnik 1. Suddenly, a tiny beeping sphere orbiting the Earth sent a profound wave of shock across the United States. This Sputnik crisis wasn't just about a satellite, it was a terrifying demonstration of Soviet technological prowess, raising the specter of military dominance from space. America had to respond, and the pressure was immense. The task fell to the U.S. Navy's Project Vanguard. On December 6, the slender Vanguard TV-3 rocket stood ready at Cape Canaveral. It was meant to be a symbol of American ingenuity, tasked with carrying a tiny satellite, often called the Grapefruit, into orbit and restoring national pride before the eyes of the world. The countdown reached zero, the engine ignited, and the rocket began to lift off. For about two glorious seconds, it seemed like it was working, and then it wasn't. After rising just four feet, a catastrophic loss of thrust caused the rocket to settle back onto the launch pad. It buckled under its own weight and exploded in a spectacular fireball. In a final, almost comical insult, the little satellite was thrown clear of the wreckage, its transmitter still beeping. The press gave it humiliating nicknames like Flopnik, Kaputnik, and Stayputnik. It was a national humiliation, broadcast live for the world to see a stark symbol of American fallibility in the face of Soviet success. But from the ashes of this public disaster came a powerful resolve. The vanguard failure was the wake-up call America needed. It shattered complacency and directly spurred the 1958 creation of NASA. This consolidated the nation's fragmented space efforts paving the way for the triumphs of Mercury, Gemini, and ultimately, the Apollo moon landing. The Flopnik failure was the critical spark that truly ignited America's journey to the stars. Our final story is perhaps the most tragic, involving the first in-flight fatality in space exploration history. In 1967, with the 50th anniversary of the Communist Revolution looming, the Soviets planned an ambitious space rendezvous mission. Political pressure for a propaganda victory was immense, pushing the program forward despite grave concerns from its engineers. Vladimir Komarov, a celebrated cosmonaut, would launch first in Soyuz 1, followed by Soyuz 2 with three crewmates. They would dock and perform a crew transfer via spacewalk. This complex maneuver was designed as a major propaganda victory, meant to assert Soviet dominance in the high-stakes space race. On April 23rd, Komarov blasted off, but from the beginning, the mission was plagued with problems. One solar panel failed to deploy, cutting power in half and blocking key orientation sensors. The craft's stabilization system then malfunctioned, sending it into an uncontrollable spin. Komarov was stranded, fighting to control a dying ship. Displaying incredible skill, Komarov managed to manually orient the craft for re-entry, but the final tragedy struck when the main parachute failed to deploy. The backup chute was released, but it became tangled with the drogue chute and failed to inflate. The capsule slammed into the ground at over 400 miles per hour. Vladimir Komarov became the first human to die during a space mission. The spacecraft had been rushed into service with over 200 known structural problems. Komarov knew the risks. It's believed he undertook the mission to protect his friend and backup pilot Yuri Gagarin from having to fly the doomed craft. Komarov's sacrifice ultimately forced changes that made the Soyuz one of the most reliable spacecraft in history. The Soyuz 2 flight was cancelled, and the program was grounded for a complete redesign. This painful lesson created a legacy of safety still used to ferry astronauts to the ISS today. So there you have it, five stories of when the dream of spaceflight turned into a nightmare. From a frozen O-ring to a faulty strut, these disasters remind us that reaching for the stars is incredibly dangerous. But these failures were not in vain. Each disaster forced engineers and scientists to re-evaluate everything, leading to stronger materials, better safety protocols, and deeper understanding. The lessons learned are written into the DNA of every modern rocket that launches today. 
They are solemn reminders that humility and attention to detail are our most important tools. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive. I hope it gave you new appreciation for the incredible complexity and courage behind every successful launch. Hit that like button, subscribe, and let me know which story shocked you most.